angles of any magnitude using radians. So this is pretty similar to angles of any magnitude using degrees, where the only difference is we're using radians. And if it's similar to the way we do it with degrees, we're going to need the unit circle. So let's go ahead and draw in our unit circle. With our unit circle, where we know that any angle in here uh, is positive, only sine is positive in the second quadrant, only tan positive in the third quadrant, and cos positive in the fourth quadrant. We know if it's in the first quadrant, our, our result is just going to be our base angle of theta in our second quadrant we have, instead of 180 minus theta, we have pi minus theta. Since 180 degrees equals pi radians, we have pi plus theta in our third quadrant. And instead of 360 minus theta, we've got two pi minus theta for our fourth quadrant. So this is going around in a positive direction. If we were going in a negative direction, going this way, this one would be minus theta. This one would be minus pi minus theta, so same angle in the second quadrant, just negative. This would be the same angle in the third quadrant, just negative. And this would be the same angle in the fourth quadrant, just negative. And now we have everything we need uh, in, in order to solve uh, trigonometric equations using radians. Let's have a look at an example. Let's have a look at sine x equals a half and the domain for x is that x needs to be between 0 and 2 pi so when you're solving trig trigonometric equations you need to look at the domain and if the domain's in radians your answer needs to be in radians but if it's in degrees your answer needs to be in degrees but here we're looking at radians stuff only so some things we want to note, we want to note that this is positive. So we know our answer for sine is going to be positive in the first and the second quadrant. So we're expecting answers there. We need our base angle, theta, that's referenced in this unit circle diagram. So we need this base angle, theta, always. So to get that, we just do the inverse sine of a half, we disregard the, the sign here, so if it was negative, we'd just be taking the positive version. And this is going to give us our base angle theta. And in this case, the inverse sine of a half is just pi on 6. And then, remember, we know for x, we're expecting answers in the first and second quadrant. So in the first quadrant, we know we want an answer of theta. And in the second quadrant, we know we want an answer of pi minus theta. So our final values for x are pi on 6 and pi minus pi on 6. So we're just going to get pi on 6 and 5 pi on 6 for our final answers for x. Let's have a look at another question. Let's look at... cos 2x equals minus 1 on root 2. And we're going to go the same domain where x is between 0 and 2 pi. Now in this case, we have our domain being changed because inside our trig function we're multiplying by a constant here, 2. So what we want to do is we want to sub that into our domain so we know we want to, we want to manipulate our domain so it matches what's here. So since that's a 2x, we need to multiply everything by 2 to match up. So we get 0, 2x, and 4pi. And what this does, this tells us 
the ranges of that the ranges of values we need to look in to make sure we get all the appropriate answers. We're also making note that we have a negative answer here. So that means we need to look at where cos is negative. Cos is negative in the second quadrant and the third quadrant since it's only positive in the first and the fourth. So we need answers in the second and third quadrant. And because we need to be looking from zero to four pi, this is telling, so two pi is one revolution around the circle. Four pi is two revolutions around the circle. Six pi would be three. So since it's four pi, we need to be looking at two revolutions around the circle. So whatever answer we get in the second quadrant, we need to add two pi to it to come back there for another revolution. And whatever answer we get in the third quadrant, we also need to add two pi to it to get our second answer on the second revolution. So let's go ahead and solve. So the first thing, we need our base angle, theta, and we're just going to do the inverse cos of 1 on root 2 to get that, which is going to give us theta equals pi on 4. So again, we're disregarding any negative signs here just to get our base angle. So we get theta is pi on 4. So remember, we needed answers in the second and third quadrant. So we know we need an answer of, it should be x. So it should be 2x, because we're solving for 2x at the moment. So we get answer in the second quadrant would be pi minus theta. Answer in the third quadrant would be pi plus theta. And then remember, we have to check a second revolution so we're going pi minus theta plus 2 pi and then pi plus theta plus 2 pi as well. So this is the answer in the second quadrant, the third, the second plus 1 revolution and the third quadrant plus 1 revolution. So now we can go ahead and sub some things in. So it's pi minus theta, so it's pi minus pi on 4, pi plus pi on 4 pi minus pi on 4, or plus with 2 pi, pi plus pi on 4, or plus with 2 pi. So we're going to get 2x equals 3 pi on 4, 5 pi on 4, 7 pi on 4, and 9 pi on 4. And finally, just to solve for x, we need to divide everything by 2 to get x by itself. So we'll get 3 pi on 8, 5 pi on 8, 7 pi on 8, and 9 pi on 8 for the final answer. Let's go have a look at one more question. We're looking at 10 x equals root 3 but this time we're changing the domain to say that x needs to be between minus pi and pi where it can equal pi but cannot equal minus pi since minus pi and pi are the same angle so this what this domain is saying is that the answers that we're interested in is saying that x can be greater than minus pi but less than or equal to pi. So all the angles that are less than or equal to pi, we know that it go from here to here. And all the angles where x is greater than minus pi go from here to here. So even though it looks pretty similar. It looks like from 0 to 2 pi, but 0 to 2 pi is referencing all of these angles. So what we're trying to say is that if any answers are in the third and fourth quadrant, they need to be the negative versions of those angles. So let's go ahead and start solving. So the first thing, we need the base angle. So we know theta is going to be the inverse tan of root 3. And that's going to give us pi on 3. And since tan is positive, 
we know we need answers in the first and third quadrant, where that's the base angle itself. See this, and then the third quadrant, we normally have pi plus theta, but we're interested in the negative version of that angle, so we don't want that answer. We need the second quadrant, but negative, so we need negative pi minus theta, since we're going around in the negative, in the negative side. So we get our final answer for x as theta and minus pi minus theta. Not the final answer, we need to sub in. So this is going to be pi on 3 and minus pi minus pi on 3. So we're going to get pi on 3 and pi minus pi on 3 is 2 pi on 3. So we get minus 2 pi on 3. And there are our final answers for x. Thank you.